what the Church of Scientology is so afraid of. This, this is SPTV. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. We got Claire here. We've got me here. Hello, everybody. Um, let's just uh, make sure we're uh, we're good. We've got the uh, we got audio. Just killing all my other windows. <laughs> For once, I did that before we started. Yay me! Yes, awesome. <laughs> um, if I look a little red, that's because we went on a uh, vacation, and uh, I'm a little red. I got a little <laughs> color, so uh, uh, it's not. Uh, you don't try to fix your video. Uh, don't try to adjust your dial. That's uh, that's the way I look. And if um, I look a little white, it's because I am white. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we try to keep Claire out of the sun. As a ginger, <laughs> she will spontaneously combust if we let her into the sun. Here we go again. Uh, as all day walkers are pro have a propensity to do. Um, and um, yeah, so uh, that's also why you guys haven't seen a lot of us is because we've been uh, we've been out doing summer stuff with the kids. Yep, so. and, and even this next week, we're going to be out doing work stuff for the foundation. So our schedule has been incredibly challenging. Sorry, people. Yes. Um, there was a lot of people asking about Mike Rinder. Um, there is a link to a post that his wife did on his uh, blog, the Mike Rinder's blog. Um, there is a post. There is a link in the description. And... Uh, Christy explains exactly um, what's going on with Mike and why he hasn't been on, uh, you know, been out and about on YouTube and answering your questions and all that other good stuff. And uh, we're uh, we're rooting for him. So hopefully uh, we are. All we're, gets... we're team Mike all yes. the way. Exactly. Um, what else do we got? We've got. um Oh, Claire's got another um, Where's Shelly. Another Where's Shelly interview came out this last week, and that one was with Amy, right? Yes, With Amy right. Scobie. And um, on Tuesday, Claire's got another uh, Where's Shelly interview coming out, and that one is with Leah. And Yay. that will be coming out Tuesday. I think it comes out Tuesday morning. If you, uh, if you set your... Uh, if you're subscribed and you turn uh, click the bell notification icon, then you will uh, be notified as soon as that goes live. And then uh, you can uh, tune in and watch that. And then um, we actually have a special video project that we're working on right now that's going to come out. Pro I'm going to say it's going to come out at the end of June, maybe early July. But... Um, we are shooting, uh, we're producing a video right now. And um, I want to say we're probably, uh, we're in the, we're well in the middle of the video. Um, we do need some extra shots. And I tried to shoot some of these shots when I was in Los Angeles last time. And I don't know what it is, but um, a lot, well, I, I can tell you right now, almost all of the shots we need take place at Scientology properties. And uh, when I roll up to a Scientology property, they're not too friendly and they um, it's not too conducive uh, for uh, video shooting. So what we've done, let me see if I can just pull this up here real quick. There you go. Oh, let's get ourselves in there a little bit better. You can there do it, honey. I knew you one of those it. was going to be the right one. Um, I know there's a typo in the top. Well, I tried to fix it four times. No matter what I do in StreamYard, it still uploads the same document that was in there. So you'll uh, you'll have to forgive my typo, which I have fixed in the document that's on my desktop. It's just not it's not updating it in StreamYard. <laughs> I'm sorry. Shots needed for secret video project. And essentially, all we need, guys, is. If, and obviously, this is for the people that live in Los Angeles. These are these are all Scientology properties in Hollywood. And um, if we <laughs> if we get um, these shots and people um, people go and shoot these shots and send us into them, uh, send them into us, then um, you can have a shot in this new video project that we're doing. And um, essentially, we're just looking for, like, if you just have an iPhone, you don't have to shoot it with any kind of fancy camera. But if you have an iPhone and you just kind of point it at the ground and tilt up 
to the Scientology building. And you could do the same thing. You could start in the sky and just tilt down to the Scientology building and then just hold it there for like 10 seconds. Um, and you can do pans too. You can be on something else and pan over to the building. Um, you can shoot the signs. I mean, I'll just go through the list real quick and tell you guys what, whatever we can get, we'll use. Um, and then I am going to try to, um, have somebody else shoot some for whatever we don't get from people that send it in. But in the past, we've crowdsourced footage from you guys and artwork and it's gone very successfully. So I figured we, we might as well do it with this as well. Yeah. We've quickly learned that this is an incredibly creative community. <laughs> yes. We have had a lot of people that have, um, <laughs> that have, uh, helped us with stuff like this, but um, on Hollywood Boulevard, they have a building called the HGB, the Hollywood Guarantee Building. We just need a shot of that. Can be from across the street. Um, can be from a, a caddy corner to that. Anything, just a shot of the building. Like I said, ten seconds is probably great. Um, there's a building on Hollywood Boulevard called the Hollywood Inn. It's the building that's kind of now uh, down near um, Highland and Hollywood, and it has a big green Scientology sign on the side of it. That's called the Hollywood Inn. It used to be a Hollywood Inn a long, long time ago, and that's where Sea Org members um, live. Um, we could use a shot of that building. Same thing, tilt up, tilt down, pan over, 10 seconds each, whatever. Um, then there's another building called Authored Services, which is down um, near Man's Chinese or, or whatever they call it these days. Um, and then there's the Association for Better Living and Education, which is just a block and a half, two blocks past that, ASI. There's the LRH Life Exhibition. That's just another, that's just the ground floor of the HGB, actually. It's just, it just says L. Ron Hubbard Life Exhibition. Um, and any of these buildings that have signs, if you just take a picture of the sign as well, just as a separate thing, that could be useful or video. Um, and then OSA, OSA is at the top floor of that Hollywood Guarantee building. So that, that first shot could probably double for that. And then CCHR. CCHR has a, a facility. That's the Citizens Commission on Human Rights. And they have a facility on Sunset. I want to say it's near, it's pretty close to Sunset and Gower, I want to say. Um, Sunset and, yeah, you can look it up. It's called the the Museum of Death, I think is what their, their facility is called. Very, uh, very so uplifting. So joyous. Yes. And then yeah, big... And, and sorry, just to add a comment um, f from, to answer questions in the comments, this is, a, these LA buildings is only what we need for this particular project. Yes, this is part of the video that we're doing. It's for a um, survivor story that is incredible, powerful, and mind blowing. But it's all these are the locations that tie into this particular story. Yes. Okay. And then the the next buildings are Big Blue. That's the building that's down on Sunset and L. Ron Hubbard Way, or Fountain and L. Ron Hubbard Way. Fountain is actually one of the best places to get the shot because then you can get that big. Uh, Scientology Hollywood or the big Scientology sign that is shown in a lot of um, videos where they t talk about Scientology being in Hollywood. Um, and then there's another building across from that called the Fountain Building. Um, and then there's the Anthony Building. A lot of these, and you'll have to look them up. I'm not going to go through and put maps of every single place. But And then the uh, last one is Celebrity Center. So if anybody is an ex-member or... Um, a fan that knows where kind of all these things are, or if you just know where one or two of these are, are um, you don't have to do all of them. If you if you got five minutes that uh, during a lunch break and you want to zip down the street and, sh and knock one of these off, amazing. And um, and and if you send us an email saying that you have footage, we will send you a specific link for you to upload it to. Um, that way we can kind of organize this. So if you get some shots. Um, and you say, Hey, you'll email Claire at blownforgood.com. Say, Hey, I've got some, um, some video shots. We'll send you a link to where to upload them. And then, um, there'll be a little, some paperwork in there for you to fill out. Um, so we have all your contact info and we know how to credit you in the video and all that good stuff. And then, yeah, um, and, and somebody asked, maybe we could post this in the community community tab and maybe we can add addresses for it too, where possible. 
Oh yeah, that's a great idea. We'll do that in the community tab. We'll put a link. We'll put a, a post in the in the community tab that has the exact address of each one of these places. And um, and if you do have photos, we'll take photos. But we would prefer it if we could have some video, um, cars driving by, that kind of thing that you can see and just see that it's you know it's live. But if you have if you have um, photos um, of these things, or if you already have videos of these things, let us know, and then um, we can go from there. And also, yes, very important. This no, <laughs> this yes. Keep it wide, <laughs> side to side. We're not putting any portrait videos at this in this thing. So if you shouldn't portrait. Um, don't even email us, please. That's just a giant waste of everybody's time. <laughs> you can email time. me, but I'm not going to forward it to Mark because don't. Yeah, cause please. He gets don't. a little fussy. Yeah, the the shot should be about, like I said, ten seconds is enough time um, for us to have some handles on it, front and back, and be able to cut into it and cut out of it. Um, if you make it fifteen seconds, that's not going to be the end of the world. It's just we're gonna we have a lot of locations, a lot of shots we don't want. Don't worry about the size of the video. It's just really how long you can upload. So if you can shoot it in four K, shoot it in four K. If you can only shoot it in ten eighty, shoot it in ten eighty. Um, but yeah, fifteen ten fifteen seconds of each one. And like I said, you can pan up, you can pan down or tilt up. Uh, tilt down and then you could pan from side to side and um, yeah keep it wide side to side 10 to 15 seconds um, and all the things in Hollywood all the Scientology facilities and in I'd Hollywood like to just place. take a moment and give a shout out to the one the only the talented Kelly Copter if you haven't subscribed to her channel head over to Kelly Copter and subscribe she is doing some fantastic work so yes awesome Okay, I think we got all that now. Um, we are gonna do some giveaways. There are several people that have sent in um, giveaways uh, in the uh, Blown for Good, uh, the, the Blown for Good store. Um, there's a link in the description if you guys haven't been over there. We got all kinds of cool stuff. We've gotten tons and tons of um, People sending us um, pictures of them in the merch. We've got people who suggested merch and we've made that merch. So we've got phone cases, mugs, sweaters, sweatshirts, hoodies, zip up hoodies, regular hoodies, everything people have requested we have made for the most part. Um, and um, in the video, if you're watching this on YouTube on your phone or there should be a little, little shelf down there that has a bunch of products that... Uh, are available in the store. And if you just click on the link in the descriptions, you can get tons of other uh, things that aren't on that little shelf. Wow, we are already up to 1,200 people watching right now. So that's great. That's uh, good nice. for a Sunday. We try to do this one a little earlier, guys. So uh, the uh, people across the pond don't have to stay up so late to watch one of these live. Um, and um, we are going to answer some questions. Um, and we are going to do a giveaway um, a half hour in and an hour in. And if we go longer than that, we'll do it every half hour as long as we're still here yapping. We um, have a, a Mike Rinder bobblehead too, which seems fitting for yes. in support of Team Mike. Yes, absolutely. And, um, and the other thing I wanted to mention, just so I don't forget about it, is that Scientology has been pretty active on Twitter claiming that... They were their policies were mischaracterized in the uh, in the recent Danny Masterson uh, court case and in how the judge was allowed their policies to be portrayed. Um, make no mistake, guys. Whatever has been said about Scientology's policies was just reading their policies. There was no. Um, there's no interjection of anything else that, <laughs> that happens in Scientology that's not part of their policies. And they are, they're basically contesting that they do not, uh, uh, I don't know what the right word is. They don't discourage their members from, um, from reporting things to the police and also that they, they encourage their members to report things, crimes to the police. Now, I was at the int base and Claire was at the int base. We were there for over a decade. I was there for 15 years. Claire was there for like 13, 13 years. How long? 
that I from was start there to 14, finish? 14 years. 14 years. Um, never once did one person there report any of the assaults that David Miscavige committed on other members. Not one time we were there did anyone file a police report and the police came onto the property and took a police report from a member on another member. That never happened once. Uh, yep. Things that should have been reported to the police happened all the time, but the police were never called. Um, in fact, for a majority of the time that we were there, if not all the time that we were there, if you went into the phones at that property and dialed 911, it wouldn't go anywhere. You had to get an outside line to be able to call outside of the property. And the only way you could get an outside line was to dial the receptionist. And if you said, put me through to the police, she just hang up on you. you she, she wouldn't put you through to the police. Nope. Um, and here's a good example of proof of this. In um, There was an article in the Tampa Bay Times, I think it was uh, the Truth Rundown series. Um, and the, and Basically, when a lot of us got out and started reporting these things, Scientology did not deny that there was physical abuse happening at their properties and that it was a culture of violence there. Not only did they not deny that, but they said, oh, that was because of Marty Rathbun and Mike Rinder. They were the ones that promoted the culture of violence and they were the ones that were abusing people. Okay. So let's just pretend that that was the case for a second. Where's all the police reports? There are none. They never, ever reported any of these assaults that were taking place on anyone, by anyone, were never once reported to the police. So if you're yeah, encouraging... And don't, and don't forget, <laughs> and don't forget, they said it was ecclesiastical justice. Well, that was in... Yeah, you know what? I think that was in the Tampa Bay Times. They Tommy Davis said that any justice that was doled out by David Miscavige was ecclesiastical justice, which also yeah. leads to support this theory that they have their own internal justice system and they are characterizing abuse by David Miscavige on members of the Sea Organization and members of Scientology. They're characterizing that as ecclesiastical justice. Yeah, okay, exactly. So and the, and the, fact, the fact of the matter is that Scientology alleging that they encourage their members to call the police is as blatant a lie, if not even worse, than them claiming that disconnection does not exist. Any Scientologist knows they have never been encouraged to call the police ever under any circumstances. Yeah, the fact... That's a good point. And I want to, I want to think, well... The other time this sort of came up was in the Anderson Cooper um, story that he did oh, on Scientology. Yes. That's where the that's where the ecclesiastical justice was brought up. Yes, that's what right. I thought. Yeah. So yeah. when he was interviewing, they, they're called the Inch Wives, but it was the wife of Marty Rathbun, Mike Rinder, Jeff Hawkins, and Tom DeVock. These four wives um, were on Anderson Cooper. And they said, they mentioned this thing. They alluded to this. Oh, that violence happened when Mike and Marty were there, not with, not under David Miscavige. And Anderson Cooper said, well, where are the police reports? And they were like, don't, don't insult us. You know, like, well, it was like, they never answered the question, but it was right. sort of like, yeah, we're, if all these assaults are taking place, then why didn't anybody report it? It could have, could have been nipped in the bud right off the bat there. Um, Anyway, you're right, though, for them to publicly put out a statement saying that they do not discourage members from reporting to police, they might as well just be saying, hey, everybody that's still in Scientology, um, not only are we, we ha not only have we been lying to you for 70 years, but we lie to everybody pretty much as just a, a, a standard practice about, and about everything, <laughs> about everything that we get questioned. And we've yeah. never done anything wrong ever since our inception. And um, any time that we have done something wrong, um, it wasn't our fault. It was the people who did its fault. And they're no longer in Scientology. And they're the ones that are causing all the trouble.
Yeah, um, and, and let's not forget that when <laughs> Tommy Davis lied about disconnection on national television, that triggered a huge wave of yes. people leaving Scientology. So I expect nothing less this time around. Yeah, We are ready and willing to help people, and believe you me, word on the street is they have an exodus happening that will no doubt will gain momentum. Yeah, we are hearing... The Aftermath Foundation are hearing for more people. We personally personally are hearing for more people. And if you're a Scientologist and you're watching this and you were the victim of Scientologist on Scientologist crime, which is the most prevalent crime within Scientology is members screwing each other over or assaulting each other or stealing businesses and then not paying for them. All sorts of this nonsense goes on on a regular basis. This is the best thing. We were talking about this in a video a few weeks ago. We had members, we've had we've had multiple Scientologists email us and tell us that this is not only happening in Los Angeles. This is not only happening in London. This is not only it's happening in all organizations. Credit card fraud, elder abuse, assaults being covered up. If you're if you're watching right now and you're a Scientologist, Tell me you can't think of one instance in your local organization where some shady stuff went on and you heard about it. There was rumblings. It was going around the whisper web. And that person, nothing ever happened to that person. The person that did the committed the crime or committed the assault or whatever it was, he just went on business as usual. Maybe he got in some trouble in Scientology world, but then he just re went right back to doing what he was doing and everything went on. And um, that I can guarantee you almost every single Scientologist knows of one of these people that committed a crime, 100% should have gone to jail, or 100% should have gotten a ticket or something. Um, there should have been a court case. He should have been made to pay somebody. Nothing. Nothing happened at all. So we're hearing from a lot of those people, but I guarantee you there's more of you out there. So... Um, yeah, if you're out there yeah. and you've got crimes uh, that have occurred and you were the victim of them, now is the time. There's actually a lawyer in Los Angeles and uh, he's represented people all over, but um, people have tried to get their money back. Like say they have $100,000 on account with Scientology and they don't plan on going back and doing any of that. Um, or that they got uh, money was put on their credit cards without them knowing or they just uh, created a credit card account uh, with this person's info and then started racking up bills on the credit card. There's a lawyer named Graham Barry in Los Angeles. When he writes a letter to Scientology saying, hey, this person was, you stole $50,000 from this person. He ran it up on his credit cards. Um, they don't even get into a legal scuffle with this guy. They just send him a check for $50,000 and say, yeah, yeah, tap, tap, tap. We're done. Uncle, uncle, we don't want to do this. There's so many crimes and financial crimes that Scientology's committed that they don't want any of this stuff making it to the court system because they it will show like, oh, this is a pattern. They're doing this on the regular. So just want to put that out there. Um, Scientology's really doubling down on this fact that they've never done anything and they're being victimized in the courts and all that. No, this is we're not this is not what we're talking about, guys. We're talking about um, them obstructing justice and they're doubling down that we're going to keep doing it. So mm -hmm. um, anyway, we're um, a lot of people have also asked, uh, why don't you guys report this to the authorities? Why don't you report this to p the police? We've been reporting everything we know since 2006 to police, sheriffs, county officials, uh, elected officials, the FBI, Congress, you name it. We've been sending these people letters, detailed yep. documentation. And let's be specific. The last police report we know of was made last night. Yeah, there's stuff happening right now, guys. Yep. Like these guys are, um, yeah, there's like ongoing things that are happening you know, when we're, just because we're not here doing a video doesn't mean nothing's happening. There's no, stuff. No, quite the opposite, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's not enough hours in the day, unfortunately, but doing our best yes. to keep up. Absolutely. Ooh, I look, I just saw, look, 
Bing, Amy Scobie. Yes, Yay. we have all been reporting what we know. Yeah, that's the other thing. It's not just Claire and I. There's a lot of people. <laughs> Amy, yes. Matt, Mike, Christy. By this you know, point, there's probably hundreds, I, I, I would guess, if not more. <laughs> yeah, there is a lot of people that are reporting things. And the what we have learned is the longer things are reported... And the more people that are reporting the same things, like they have the same story, but it's in a different place or they have the same story and it was at a different year or, you know, but it's the same sort of assaults, the same sort of abuse, the same sort of um, taking Sea Org members passports or keeping any identification they have to be able to travel. Any of these things um, are frowned upon in pretty much all countries as well. These aren't things that are like, oh, that's a U.S. thing or that's a U.K. thing. No, for the most part, you're not supposed to keep people's passports if you're not the person whose passport it is. <laughs> so unless you're on a cruise ship, okay, <laughs> they shouldn't be but having passports. Then, but even then, I mean, the, the cruise ship people don't keep your passport when we go on a cruise. Yeah, they don't keep it. They just want no. to see it. <laughs> yeah, they just want to look at it. Most yeah. times they don't even want to hold it. They just want to scan it. Yeah, when you're in the Sea Org, Scientology wants to look at your passport the entire time you're in the Sea Org. <laughs> and keep looking at it in a locked cabinet so you can't go anywhere with it. Um, okay. I think that's enough of that. Did you have anything else now that I've uh, finished my Scientology or ridiculous rant? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for giving me the floor. No, I think I'm good. I said what I wanted to say. Awesome. I just, uh, yeah, we're good. I know it's a little early, but... Um, you know, we could actually just uh, rock and roll on some giveaway right now if you want. You want to do the first sure. one, babe? Yeah, absolutely. I would love to. So we're we're we'll do the bobblehead first for Team Mike. Awesome. We, we got, got about we got about seventeen hundred people in the chat right now. Nice. Um, if you guys are in need of a bobblehead, and uh, and also oh, before I forget, there's a link in the description. Marilyn makes outfits for the bobbleheads. So if you have a bobblehead and you're just getting and you're kind of tired of the same old, same old suit that the bobblehead's wearing, you can get him a Xenu outfit. You can get him a Duke of Chug outfit. Um, do you have that thing that she sent you? Yes, I do. The, you ready? The, Claire got this this week, guys. It's a Claire bear. <laughs> it's a crocheted Claire bear. Um, <laughs> She and uh, Marilyn son. made that he and sent it, it and in. He was like, I want that. Yeah, our so we, son. We, we made a donation to the foundation, the Aftermath Foundation, in exchange for a Claire Bear. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Alrighty. So I'm going to do a countdown for a bobblehead. Awesome. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, there you go. Holly. Holly, Holly Mays. Mays. Okay, awesome. Congratulations, Holly Mays. Shoot me an email, claire at bloomforgood.com with your address, and we will mail that out to you first thing tomorrow morning. Nice. Perfect. Okay, good. Well, there you go, guys. Um, I say we uh, do some questions. We'll see. Uh, we've got a few people. Oh, we got some, uh, some super chats already fi uh, fired up here. Um, awesome. Michelle... Michelle McIntosh says, hi from Newcastle, Australia. Wow. Nice. Awesome. That's crazy. Um, we got people from all over here. Um, Judith Su Susie. I'll say Susie. Su Susie. Um, Claire, I watched your interview with Andrew Gold and made me realize just how little of your story I knew. You were incredibly brave and inspirational. I was near tears listening to it. Wow. Thank you, Judith. I appreciate it. And yes, lots more to share, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your perspective. It's fine. I'm not, I'm just telling my story. It's, it's not a, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gino Dean, I think this is uh, Jerry from Sarasota. Yes, Sarasota Jerry. Mike has untold thousands of friends and supporters lifting him up with prayers and best wishes. Absolutely. We're definitely on team Mike and um, we're going to get him fixed up. And um, yeah, whatever he needs, we're here for him. And um, if uh, if it comes to it, we might even reach out to you guys if there's something we need um, in order to make sure he makes it uh, 
through whatever he needs to make it through. And uh, we're here for him no matter what. And we will know more very shortly. So stay tuned. We will absolutely, we've made it very clear. We are in 100% to do whatever we have to. Absolutely. Um, Carol D says, at Claire, where's the, sh oh, the Where's Shelly series? Love it. Okay, good. Oh, awesome. awesome. Yay. There you go. Lots more to come. Great, great material. We're going to keep asking. You know, I've heard people say, oh, well, we know where she is. You know what? I don't know where she is. I assume where she is, but that's not good enough in the case of Scientology or in the case of Shelley Miscavige. And the bottom line is, is there are many other executives missing as well. So we're going to keep going until something is done about this and, and until we know Shelley is alive and well. Yes. Hey, Bungalow Bill, thank you for the super chat. Appreciate that. <clears throat> I guess he's watching in from uh, Canada. That looks like a... Uh, Canadian dough there. Um, M. Adams, nice. guys, YouTube has started serving me ads for Ritz crackers. Coincidence? I think not. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I don't, I don't, um, I have YouTube. I just subscribe. Um, I pay for uh, YouTube premium because I, it's for our, all our kids and we all get to use it. But um, so I don't actually see any of these ads, but I th bet you I'd be getting some cracker ads too if I uh, if I did have that uh, ability to get those. Um, oh, here's a bungalow bill again. It says, do public Scientologists really not Google Scientology? Um, don't. It's it's sort of like this thing where there's bad news on the internet. If the Scientologists are being told. You don't go on the internet. It's just bad news about Scientology on the internet. And in Scientology, if you are reading bad news and you're listening to things that suppressives are talking about, then that will cost you money inside Scientology. So if you, if you have to go in for counseling, at the beginning of every counseling session, they ask you a series of questions um, that would sort of weed out any Googling of Scientology in the recent uh, time. And then you have to confess to that. And confessing to that could cost you, could cost you $5,000, could cost you $20,000. And yeah. your, all of your Scientology counseling is parked until you sort out the fact that you were looking on the internet trying to find out about stuff about Scientology. So Scientologists... Not only are they living, uh, uh, Tori uh, Chrisman used to say this all the time, it's like the Truman Show. So Scientologists are in the Truman Show and this whole world has been built around them. And some of them know that they're in the show, but if they ask to look outside the show, wow, they're gonna get in big trouble. That was me this time. So if you if you got some kind of drink game going on and Claire, <laughs> Uh, normally her phone rings. I, I love it when it's you. It's that, so rewarding. I, I was, cannot believe it. I was trying to sort out that <laughs> stupid shot list typo for f 10 minutes before we started. And I didn't get to put my do not disturb on. So I'm a very, a very apologize profusely. And uh, that will not happen again. At least this stream. Do I get um, to yell at anyway. you after this? To tell you off for having your phone on? I'm just <laughs> yeah, you kidding. can give me. You can give me grief <laughs> later. Um, anyway, the Scientologists know that there's nonsense going on, but they're not allowed to look because it, essentially it will cost them money. And if they get in trouble, I mean, there's a girl that we know, a woman that we know, Sylvia DeWall. She was declared a suppressive person for watching Leah on Dancing with the Stars. Yes. Okay. She didn't say anything about Scientology. She didn't post anything on the internet. She didn't badmouth somebody. She didn't turn anybody into the police. She watched Dancing with the Stars when Leah and, was on it. And they called yeah, and her in. Fact, in. <laughs> and, and doesn't she have a recording of her interview, which was posted on Tony Ortega's site? We should link to that. It's yeah. insane. Yeah. They, she had a person call her in and give her, put her, like, put her through an interrogation. And the bottom line, the end of that was, yeah, it's over. You watched Leah on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> so, yeah, there it's, and they make an example of those people. So then the other people know, yeah, maybe don't do that. So, 
Hey, Bungalow Bill, do public Scientologists really not Google Scientology? Yes, they really don't Google Scientology. We did that one that already, right? Reason. Yeah, I was just calling oh, back okay. to it that say, yeah, that's the deal. Um, oh, okay. Here's one for you. Clara Bear at Blown for Good. You were outstandingly strong on the Ashley Banfield interview. Thank you, Andrea. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Yeah, that was pretty good. I mean, it, it was short, but it, I mean, it was on primetime yeah. TV. I, I want to say that channel has like 700,000 subscribers or something like that. So, hey, that's. Yeah. And it was so amazing that Scientology and OSA creeped Ashley Banfield out professionally and personally, simply and only because she tweeted out earlier that day that she would interview me. Yeah, My that's boy. another thing. I've I've had that happen to me too. I went on a I went on a show. Uh, Patrick Bet David. He has a uh, website called Valuetainment or YouTube channel. And when I went to go do the interview with him, he was down in Texas at the time, and I went down there. I was also doing some other stuff down in Texas, and I went over there, and um, and he had all the stuff that they had sent him, and I was just like, oh, that's perfect, that's good. And he's like, I've had hundreds of people on nobody does this nobody sends me um a, like no one sends me a file on the person i'm about to interview with all the dirt that they could dig up on that person most of it made up but um anyway it was pretty awesome um arnie van halen do not be away for so long again what the heck am i supposed to listen to at the warehouse well you know to be fair arnie i appreciate it we won't we'll try not to leave so long again but to be fair we have about a hundred videos on our channel chances are you haven't seen them all so if you tune in and we're not here you can watch any of the other videos that are up there unless you've watched all those <laughs> then you might have to jump over to amy your channel or uh you know one of the other sptv channels um sparky and oregon super chat thank you for that sparky and oregon that is an oddly uh specific amount for a super chat without any oh, text yeah. But uh, I appreciate it, Sparky. I'll take every I'll take le every last super chat uh, you want to send us, um, and um, I appreciate it. Oh, Mark Fisher, how do how, how long Mark? do you want the shots? Oh, ten or fifteen seconds. Uh, he, I think he's talking about the shots of the building. But Mark, you're not going to L.A. You live in Vegas, you maniac. <laughs> um, this is for the people that are in L.A. P please, people, don't travel. Don't make a trip to do these shots. If you live in LA, I'm I, I would I'm I'm asking you, it's not that big of a deal to zip over there. But if you live in Vegas and you go there, that's on you. Okay, I'm not asking for that. Um, John Satowski says, "Hope you are over your cracker stomach issues." I am not. <laughs> I'm not. I have literally, um, I've had a crackerless diet for the past few weeks to see if I can like return to normal, and I'm finally kind of getting back to uh, regular here after uh, going on that mad cracker binge from all the crackers people were sending in. Um, we'll figure it out. I might still do those videos, but I'm just going to eat the one cracker for the video and then that's it. Maybe two, maybe three max, depending on how many takes we have to do, but that's about it. I'm not going to, you know, eat a package. Segway to a new topic. Have you noticed how every single life we do, it always bothers people that we're not in the same room? No, I've never seen that ever. Oh, yeah. Um, so I just wanted to let everyone know who has that question. When Mark started back up his channel, he set up in his small room down there for him. And I butted in and decided to take part in all the fun and, and contribute to the motion. And I do that from my comfort zone, which is in my office. Neither location fits to two people. So there you have it, folks. I'm yeah. on the main level and Mark's in the basement. <laughs> yes, and we are going to upgrade her setup. We have everything here and hopefully the next time we do a live, um, it'll be all her new setup and it'll be amazing yes. and everybody will love it. And yes. There you go. Also, sometimes one of us need to duck out and if we were in the same place, that would be awkward. So yes. if Claire has to pop off and sort out a dog or kid issue that's in the middle of uh going down or if i have to go grab something or do something and she takes over it makes it a little bit more um conducive to do that more so, manageable yep for yeah, sure it's all good we're we're you know i spend a lot of time with this gal so you know it's 
an hour or two <laughs> he doesn't here mean, in separate he doesn't rooms. Like, he doesn't mind being yeah. one level down from it's me. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> um, Lisa Robertson says, hoping for a speedy recovery for Mike. Yes, we all yes, are, Lisa. Thank 100%. you. 100%. Team Mike, we, we are going to do this. Seriously. Yeah. Um, X Scientologist says, what maximum size of video? Yeah, don't worry about the size of video because we're going to give a place to you to upload it. It could be 12 terabytes if you wanted to. That might take a few weeks to upload. But um, but yeah, anything, um, if it's 10 seconds, if each shot is 10 seconds long, the files won't be that big. Even if you shoot them in 4K, they won't be that big. Enchanted Change Jewelry. Hi, Mark and Claire. Um, Nate, you were great on earlier podcasts. Hmm. Hi, Goldie. I survived a heart attack this week. Recovering to SPTV. Question. The suppressive electrician asks, when are bobble picks? Oh, like when, when are yeah. bobble picks? Oh, because we haven't been doing those. Yeah. No. Um, the bobble picks are fun, but they're wholly, unpro wholly unproductive. We don't get a lot of um, productive dialogue. Um, we, like people are asking questions and we're trying to answer them. And we're, I thought we were kind of wasting a lot of time showing funny pictures. So, and they did start to trickle down, but maybe we'll do that. We, maybe we'll do, we were doing them every week. I think it would be more appropriate maybe to do those once a month or once every few months or whatever, if anyone sends them in, but we yeah, haven't been we, getting, we could do it for like, you know, Scientology event celebrations. <laughs> like well, either way, day. <laughs> either way, no one's been sending us any, so we haven't felt the need to, to, oh, well, to do them. I've gotten some. I, I'm still getting some. Some is like a handful. I'm talking about we were getting 30, 40 a week. So if we're not getting that many, there's nothing to show. So if you do have some you want to send us, Mike Rinder bobbleheads at orgs, do remember if you do shoot um, a picture of your bobblehead, at, uh, at a Scientology organization, please do it with and without the bobblehead because we are s sort of creating a database of these org photos to see what they currently look like and um, how empty the parking lots are. We like that. That's always fun. Yeah. Uh, Maria de, de Jesus Gutierrez says, Oh, Maria. What? Yay. I'm down there all the time. I can do this tomorrow. I can shoot whatever my iPhone shoot in. There are all things Los Feliz need them. Um, there are things in Los Feliz. Um, you could do um, that Los Feliz mission. You could do that one as well, Maria. That would be amazing. Um, and um, but for the most part, the um, the ones we really need are the ones in Hollywood. The Los Feliz one is whatever, but Big Blue, HGB, CC, those kind of things. That's what we're looking for. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yes, for that, that's Maria. awesome. Thank you, Maria. Um, Kristen says, question, Mark, did you just get lucky in Scientology being assigned to and trained for an industry that you like and have been successful at after leaving Love SPTV? No, I actually, um, Scientology did their best from, uh, to not allow me to do what I was good at when I was there. They moved me around to all sorts of other things that I didn't really particularly, um, have a propensity for or enjoy doing like I was a post production or a, a pre production executive and I was a shoot production executive. And um, I really like being a technician or building audio visual systems. And that was actually only my official job for like the last six months I was there. That was it. For the whole time I was there, I was not allowed to do that. And even when I did do it, they call it um, hobby horsing. Oh, you're just doing what you like to do. You're not doing your job. Um, there was many years that I was over those areas, but it wasn't my direct job to do that. And whenever those areas that built the audiovisual systems, whenever they got um, behind or whenever they had a huge thing, backlogs of systems to produce, um, then it was allowed for me to go in there and work and produce those things. But for the most part, they actually didn't want me to do that. And they didn't allow me to do that until the very last six months I was there. And it was kind of poetic that I ended up doing that. And I loved it so much. And I was so good at it that they had to get rid of me. And then that's what I do for a living now. So, and they didn't, they, they're, 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 they're useless at that stuff. They can't, they couldn't train somebody on that if they wanted to. All the training that I um, did when I was there, I did on my own to learn about a lot of these things and how they worked and 
um, and how to do it professionally. And then I uh, have uh, educated myself uh, immensely since escaping. And um, so, yeah, no, it wasn't, I wouldn't credit, I would, if, if I never went there, I'd probably do it, be doing the exact same thing. That's what I think uh, yep. in my heart of hearts. Um, thank you for that. Uh, question, yes, I realize you will take 4K or 1080, but it's easier to film in your native format. What is your native format, Mark? Um, well, we can, it's not actually, it doesn't actually matter to us because we can scale, we can scale it down to 1080. So if you can shoot in 4K, we'll take 4K. If you can shoot in 1080, shoot in 1080, whichever one you want. Um, if you're shooting it with your iPhone, if you go into your camera settings, it will, you can say what resolution you want it to shoot at in there and, um, we'll accept any of those. Don't worry about any of that. Um, we're not, we're asking for shots. I'm not going to dictate. It's got to be this and it's got, we'll, we'll make it work no matter what you guys send. Rocky road says the news, the news nation video has a commenter that claims Aaron is anti-Semitic by the nickname is a Aryan Aaron. He called me a xenomorph. Um, okay. Rocky road. I don't know about any of that, but, um, okay. Xenomorph. Um, what the heck's that? Great. I have no idea. I don't know what any of this means. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, there are lots of crazy commenters on uh, lots of places on YouTube. Not everybody's got a Goldie. You know what I'm saying? So, yes. um, I think Goldie, All hail Goldie. I'm actually not even <laughs> sure. Why, I'm not actually even sure. Um, I would love to see some of the things that Goldie takes out. We, they never even reach us. So for the most part, the comments that I see on our channel, um, sometimes they're a little snarky or they're a little, uh, you know, they poke fun at me or they poke fun at Claire. But I mean, there's nothing that I'm going to get. I mean, I was, I was in a cult for 15 years, guys. YouTube comments hardly going to trigger me. Okay. <laughs> That's not how we roll over here. Um, we have far thicker skin than you might imagine. <laughs> yes. Claire, the video with Amy was great. You gals are amazing, strong, etc. I truly admire you. That's nice. Thank you, Susan B. Um, Helen Girl 55 says, Hi, Mark and Claire. Great to see you both today. Great to see you, Helen Girl 55. Um, yeah, we haven't, yes, uh, thank you we've for been being so, here. wow, we're, we're at 2000 here now. Nice. 2000. And we're coming up in 13 minutes. We're coming up on another giveaway. So make sure you, uh, you get your keyboard, you keyboard, uh, folks or phone or whatever you're on, uh, get ready to jump into the chat when you, uh, when we go to start throwing out some of this, uh, these giveaways, these merch giveaways, Michelle Mish. We should pick a date to all post where is Shelly all on social media tagging Scientology and keep on every day. Might be able to bring her forward, but at least get people talking and keeping away. Yeah, everything helps, guys. The um, There's a lot of people um, that are finding out about this where Shelly thing from YouTube, um, uh, last there's a show on HBO called Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. He talks about where he's talked about where Shelly probably more than any other person on any kind of streaming service or or like official network like HBO. Um, but he's done a lot of where Shelly content, and um, and then yeah, that guy um, that was on the I think it was the Golden Globes, uh, one of the award shows made a where Shelly joke, so. Yeah. It's getting out there. I mean, we've been we've been asking where Shelly. We did a picket. Two thousand nine. When was that picket that was in Hollywood with Anonymous? Yep, that was two thousand nine. Yeah, we did with a picket. Jenna Jenna Miscavige and Mark Fisher was there. And yeah, Tori Chrisman was there. That one outside yeah. of the HGB. No, no, this one was in Hall. This one was at Big Blue on Sunset. Oh, we went to a picket. Maybe only I went to that one. Maybe you yeah. didn't go to that one. That was an yeah. anonymous picket. And I was even wearing an anonymous mask. Scientology's got tons of pictures of me with the anonymous mask on the, the V for Vendetta, Guy Fox mask. Um, we went to a picket at Scientology. Anonymous did a picket. I kid you not, guys. This was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Someone flew a plane over Scientology's property 
with one of those banners, you know, like you see at the beach where it says, you know, like, buy Fritos, they're great, or whatever they say, or, you know, happy <laughs> birthday, Michelle. Somebody flew over, sign, over all around Hollywood above the Scientology properties with a plane that had one of those banners, and it said, where's Shelly? I don't know who did that. I don't know how that happened, but it was amazing. It was <laughs> There's got to be pictures of that somewhere, but it was literally. Yeah, no, I've, I've seen pictures of that. Oh, my goodness. And when <clears throat> and we didn't know this was going to happen. I mean, I didn't know this was going to happen. Somebody somewhere knew. But um, we were sitting there, and we're like, what does that say up there? And then they got close. We're like, it says, where's Shelly? Oh, my goodness. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that was pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, Sylvia, 1978, says, love you for all you do and for all you are about to do and have achieved so far. Watching you since November. Keep it up. Love from the Netherlands. Well, thank nice. you, Sylvia. We appreciate Amazing. that. Thank I love how there's people here. here from like other countries and yeah. other, Many um, other countries, other states and other towns. And it's amazing. Misbehaving. I read the Amazon version. Oh, I read the Amazon version of BFE years ago, but I've become such a cracker liquor Claire Bear. I had to go for the hardcover, which I got in two days. Yay. Yeah, the blown for good shipping is amazing. I mean, if you place an order, <laughs> as Claire raises her hand, <laughs> if you place an order in the morning, almost every single day, it will get shipped out by lunch or at least dinner. At least I do a post office run every single morning. If there's books to go, when I head off to work, Claire's already processing them all and they're all sitting there and I take them. And then we've got other people that take them during the day. So if you want a book and you want it fast, you can go to the Blum for Good store and order up a paperback or a hardback. They're both signed by Claire and myself. And um, yeah, they ship out same day usually. Yep. First time, Angry Isaac says first time catching alive thanks to both of you for all you do bought bfg on kindle then as an audiobook well worth the extra to hear you read it mark you do a great job thank you very much i awesome. recorded it on this microphone right here thank you <laughs> isaac i appreciate that uh pt bird saw a pic of gobles as dm his reincarnation i don't know i've never seen like a side by side of that but um i'd have to take a peek at that i don't know yeah, I don't know about that one. I don't know enough about either one of those. But, you know, we did learn something very spooky in the last week about some stuff. I don't – do you want to say it, Claire? Do you want to talk about it? Yeah, let's do it. It's okay. so chilling. It's just – so So um, essentially, as most people here know, I was in Religious Technology Center for eight years. That's the top – the highest ecclesiastical organization in Scientology run by David Miscavige himself. And there is an L. Ron, L. Ron Hubbard advice in which he states that <clears throat> the staff of Religious Technology Center – are to be the police of all of Scientology. And he describes the way that they are supposed to act um, and exude is to be, quote, as hard as cold chrome steel, unquote. And so on our Wednesday show, on the Wednesday show I did with Amy Scobie last week, someone actually commented and told us that hard as cold chrome steel is a direct quote from an Adolf Hitler speech to Nazi youth. Yeah. If that's, that's not insane, crazy. there I mean if that doesn't blow your mind, uh I would I, I was mind blown. I was like, what in the world? So basically, without knowing it, I was trying to follow an Adolf Hitler instruction to Nazi youth that was repeated by none other than L. Ron Hubbard himself. Yeah, that's sort of crazy if you think about it for a second. And yeah, they're the let police. that settle in. Yeah, and RTC <laughs> is the police of Scientology. Oh, that's another thing I w w that we were thinking about was that in Scientology, if you get in trouble or if you get in trouble with the law or the police might not get in involved, Scientologists are not worried about the police. Scientologists are not afraid of the police. They're not afraid of local law enforcement. You know who Scientologists are afraid of? Mm. 
They're afraid of the religious technology center. The, if the religious technology center, that's the highest, highest organization in all of Scientology. If they say you are declared a suppressive person, you're declared a suppressive person. You're never going to see your family again. You're never going to be able to work at your Scientology business again. Your life is over as you know it. So if they say don't report something to poli the, the local police, you're not going to do it because the Scientology police are much, 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 much harder on Scientologists than um, and can do more harm like that. Not to say that the regular police shouldn't be notified because if someone's committed a crime, then the police need to get involved and all that stuff. But just in terms of how Scientologists react, they do whatever they're told. They don't, they don't, uh, if you're wondering, well, why aren't these people coming forward and why aren't they reporting these things? They do what they're told. If they're told not to report things to police, they're not reporting things to police. Okay. Obi O'Brien says, the beginning of the end. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, absolutely. Thank yes, you for that, Obi. We appreciate that. Um, we got five minutes up, uh, five minutes to the giveaway. I'm just trying to keep track because we lose track. We start yapping. I start yapping and rambling and then we forget all about it. <laughs> and what time are we going to go until 4.30? Or until we run out of questions. Oh, yeah, we should just say... We should just agree right now because, um, yeah, we're <laughs> we already committed to our neighbors. Let's say five. We'll stop at five. No matter what, we're, we're shutting it down at five. 4.30. 4.30. Shutting it down at 4.30. <laughs> 4.30. <laughs> final giveaway at 4.30. That's my final answer. Otherwise, I Good. won't be able to have the house ready. Thank you for your understanding, people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Michelle Carpenter, Roller Coaster Week. All my love to y'all. Also, if any viewers want to join the Discord server to chat with 50 plus now and growing fellow SPs and get notified of SPTV live streams, Goldie has the link. Yeah, if um, if you can get that link, Claire, and we'll put it in the description and I might even head over there and see what's up with all that. Perfect. I don't really get into that kind of stuff, but I might. I'll try and I'll see what's up. Destiny Salazar, with so many crimes and receipts for those crimes, what do you think keeps the authorities from stepping up? Um, that's a good question. It's we were when we were um, when we were working with um, some different agencies on this because of the religious cloaking that Scientology hides behind. It's very very hard for them to bring a case against them. Um, and the example that was used with me by one individual agent was if somebody says David Miscavige shot somebody, we need the gun. We need the person who got shot. We need David Miscavige. And hopefully we need a video or a bunch of people that saw him do that. Now, what Scientology will do is if let's say I'm there. I work at the property and I say David Miscavige hit me and then I go to the police. Well, Scientology will get a hundred people that were at that property to all write. I was there when Mark was meeting with him and Dave never touched him and they'll sign an affidavit that says that. So it's basically my word against a hundred people that say that they were also there. Even if they weren't there, they didn't witness anything. There was three people there. Um, and those three people, they don't even do affidavits. They get all these other people that weren't there to do the affidavits. Um, I mean, there's a few guys at the Imp base that Dave beat on a regular basis, like just nonstop. Like in the people that he beat on, they were in the top five. Those individuals that I personally and Claire has seen, um, David Miscavige abuse these guys. We've seen affidavits from them saying that David Miscavige has never even yelled at me. He's never even raised his voice. One time there was a little bird that had broken its wing outside of our office. and David Miscavige went out there and picked it up and nursed it back to health. And I mean, these are the affidavits that are right. Not only has so he not ridiculous. beat them, but he's rescuing birds in his, in his, in, 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 during the work day, okay? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Such a hit. Uh, Pat Broker. Um, C.O. Bilf, such a hypocrite, telling members not to call the police, threatening to call feds when he finds cash in the freezer at a rival safe house. What is going on? What is going on in the comments? I don't know what this has to do with, um, but um, 
Yeah. <laughs> okay, <I don't> <laughs> then. Thank you, Pat Broker, for being here. Thanks, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Roger that, that. <laughs> that was supposed to be Pat Broker <laughs> commenting on our channel. If you guys don't know, Pat Broker was one of the two people that uh, L. Ron Hubbard actually turned over the management of Scientology to before David Miscavige pushed him out and took over himself. By the um, way, Amy Scovey just commented in the comments that she sent their stupid affidavits to the FBI. Oh, nice. my oh it's zeroed <laughs> out. That's it, guys. I'm in the clear. I'm in the clear. Even after I did it, she still didn't put her phone on Do Not Disturb. And she gave me back. It's a tie now. And no, I'm off the, I did I'm off put it on Do Not Disturb. But I'm supposed to pick something up. And I had to remind myself of that. And I didn't know that we were going to be doing this right mm. at this time. Tampa, Japan, Green of Gables. Oh, you can read this one. Okay. Tampa, Japan of Green Gables. Claire, I emailed you to redeem my giveaway prize from the last live stream. Awesome. I'm quite sure I've sent it. Uh, I don't always remember to send the tracking information, but I've made a note and I will double check to make sure it's on the way. Thank you. John Satowski says, Oh, some members, if you leave Scientology, I will send you a monthly cracker. Oh, send you monthly cracker shipments. Um, <laughs> that's very nice of you, John. And I can vouch for John because he has sent me cracker shipments. And um, I'm not sure that necessarily um, the OSA people that are leaving, the first thing they're going to need is crackers. But at least they will have some food uh, in the form of a cracker, in addition to whatever other help they need. OSA people, um, when you do decide to leave, you can give us a call and we will still help you, even though you're, um, as Denver Stevo likes to say, you're not the best smelling um, Scientologists, the OSA guys. But you can um, shed that when you leave. It's very easy. Yeah, once you leave Far that easier place. easier than you might think. Yeah, exactly. Once you once you leave there, you won't smell like that anymore. Um, nope. Joanne Buck says, hey, Claire, strange question, but do you have any family from Limerick? I'm asking because my grandfather was one of 12 and you look like me. Wow. Well, she I'm not. So Limerick, I'm thinking is Ireland. I don't know. I grew up in a cult. I'm not too familiar. I've never been to Ireland, but very likely because my grandma was one of 12 people, well, she, 12 kids. She was from Cork, Ireland. So it wouldn't surprise me. I've come across other second and third cousins who also look exactly like me. And I don't look like my mother, not by coloring anyway, so. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Message me, maybe we're, maybe we're related. <laughs> yeah, get on that 23 and me. Uh, Bo Beats. How did your son's BFG report go? Thanks for LE reply. Um, I don't think he actually has gotten graded on. Did he get graded on that? No, one he yet? did. He did great. Yeah. Oh, that's no, right. I think he got an A. Yep. I want to say he got an A. Yeah. <laughs> um, the teacher was a Depeche Mode fan. It was. It was almost a given. It was almost yeah. a shoe in. Guys, come on. <laughs> um, George Massey, do we need to 10x? the aftermath foundation um the aftermath foundation is doing great right now um we have been getting a ton of support and um we are we have some amazing stuff coming up um that you guys are going to find out about results of the what the donations have gone to and i want to say that's going to be probably the end of june early july and um it's going to be amazing trust me Yep, and we have lots lots of new projects in the works. So yes, we will continue to grow and expand. And, and also, whenever you're ready to come, we haven't needed to specifically, purposefully ask for a specific fundraiser as yet, but we'll never say never. We'll just keep growing. Keep on keeping on. Yeah. Ken's channel, Happy Chat. What guitars you got? I have 15. I have a problem. LOL. <laughs> I'm Malcolm in an ACDC and KK Downing in a Judas Priest tribute. Well, with 15 guitars, you got to do something with all that. Um, I have um, two guitars in the background and one was my father's bass guitar. He has uh, since passed away, but I put that up uh, in uh, memory of him. 
And the other one is a guitar that I was given for my birthday that is signed by Depeche Mode. And then I do have some other ones that I'm putting up. I'm just running out of real estate in this small room. So I got to figure that one out. But thank you for that, Ken. I appreciate that. Um, Felipe B says, happy uh, Super Chat. Thank you for that, Thank Felipe you for B. Thank Felipe. Um, Kat and Maggie, I'm loving the idea of Mike Renner bobblehead Ken as in Barbie. Um, okay. Oh, like she wants an outfit, I think, Marilyn. I think that with that that's an outfit outfit request. Scott, thank you for the super chat. Um, you know what? I got so excited about warning us about the uh, giveaway. Oh, we that forgot we're the four giveaway. Four minutes over the giveaway, and so, we're almost at twenty two hundred people. So yay! What, yeah. what are you giving away this time, honey? I'm gonna do. I'm gonna uh, do whatever they want. If you want a book, or if you want merch, it'll be book or merch. Anything in the BFG store. So it doesn't matter what you want because um, if you win, you get to pick something and then send us a link of the thing that you want. And then we'll just send you a link back that allows you to redeem that for free. It's a very yep. seamless operation. And um, if you're, I'm, I'm flipping over to the live uh, chat here. If you want this, it's 4.05 my time. So if you want this, you get up in that, uh, get in the chat and uh I, I know Mar Mar Goldie does not like it when I say this, but blow up the chat. <laughs> blow up that chat. That should um, always almost be a merch. Yeah. Idea. Blow up and the I don't want to say this is a fact, but I, I think I've noticed that a lot of the winners, a majority of them are subscribers. I think it just gives them an edge in their overall luck kind of karma somehow, situation. Somehow as the comments fly by, they jump out at you. Is that what sometimes you're saying? The, okay. Sometimes the ones that are subscribers, I go, mm, I've seen I that name before and it gets I, picked. <laughs> I never used to believe in giveaways until we started doing them and I started oh. actually sending people stuff. And I was like, oh, you can actually, this does can actually work. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, so what I do, guys, is the comments are going. I literally just spin the wheel and I just I click on one. Um, I like to do a countdown. So I'm going to start doing the countdown now. And uh, when I hit one, I'm going to pick something. That's how it's going to roll. And um, we're going to do it that way. You ready, guys? And ready. Five, four, three, two and one more bobo more bobo that's funny i knew a guy named bobo that was on another show i used to watch um <laughs> pick me i closed my first real estate real estate deal today well Boom. you got it you got it more bobo um you that's win amazing so all you got to do is you got to email claire at blownforgood.com with a link from the bfg store of what item you want and Claire will send you back a link that says redeem it. And then you just say yes, you put in your data and you just it just sends it to you for free. No shit. You don't have to pay for shipping. You don't have to pay for the item. Just it's 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 seamless. It's really seamless. It's a good system. Thank you, more Bobo. I appreciate it. Sorry to everybody else who didn't win. Um I don't but know if you're also thank you for also, participating. Yeah, thank you for trying. <laughs> and also, more Bobo, if you're not a subscriber, you better you better subscribe, okay? Cuz I made that whole big spiel about the subscribers. <laughs> so you better subscribe so that that I was right about that. Um okay. Let's get back to the starred chats here. Uh Scott, thank you for that, Scott. Uh Rachel X X O X O UK from Highlands of Scotland. Thanks for all you do. Awesome. Well, thank you, Rachel. We appreciate it. We're gonna we're gonna get over there pretty soon. We've got a lot of uh, family over there, and um, the kids are itching to uh, go over there. We're this summer's a little jammed up, but next summer we might be able to make something happen. Yeah, or maybe even Christmas. We'll see. Yeah, Mac D. Dark clouds have been gathering over Scientology for decades, and oh, brother, it's starting to rain. Oh yeah, there's definitely. Um, we just saw a bunch of lightning today in our uh, in some of the things that we're dealing with. So yeah, they're they're definitely. Um, Osa has is going to be busy. Metalhead, how Scientology? Oh, so, sorry, pause for a second. Purple pause. Groovy sixty nine. Uh, send me an email. The last giveaway we did. So you guys know every time we reach a thousand, the next thousand subscriber mile count. So for example, we hit thirty three thousand um, a little bit ago. The person I chose did not email me back. So I see you're asking for a book. Email me and you win a book, a signed book. So there you go. All right, keep going, honey. Sorry. 
Metalhead says, how can Scientology lie about written policies that people already know? Didn't they have to present their policies on paper to the court? Well, that's exactly the thing. Scientology would not offer up a Scientology expert. This is the ridiculous thing of this whole thing. Scientology, you'd think they'd have an expert witness that could testify in Scientology. But the problem is, is that Scientologists are taught how to professionally lie. There's actually, there actually is training routines and it's, it's called a training routine and they're, they go like one through, what is it, nine? Yep. There's a whole bunch of training routines. Yep. One of them is called TRL and it teaches a Scientologist how to lie. Yep. And you don't pass doing this, it's a drill, like you practice it over and over and over again. You're not allowed to pass the drill until you can effectively lie. That is the stated end phenomena of the drill. When yep. person and passes the drill, when they can easily, and what does it say? And f it says, and easily and facily lie. That's what yes. it actually says in the writing. So Scientology is not able to put up their own witness because the prosecution knows they're just going to lie. So they need to get somebody who's not in Scientology to be the expert on Scientology. And really, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Claire, you just read their references. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's I not mean, like Claire I, I made up a bunch to, of stuff. Yeah, I, my, my testimony was the policies of Scientology and first-hand witness, um, you know, first-hand uh, experience as to seeing those policies applied. It was equal parts, but yeah, absolutely. I, and, and factor in, I only quoted the policies I currently have access to. There are thousands more that I just simply don't have access to. They're not available in the public domain. And for that matter, they're not available to Scientologists in general. They're only available to upper management uh people in scientology so yeah <clears throat> okay sunday night pff, 7 a.m monday morning great wake up uh well i mean we can't be in all time zones at the same time no okay? <laughs> sorry but thanks for being here we appreciate you we we try wow. to um cater to all time zones it's just a little challenging sometimes <laughs> Um, lightning fan for lightning fan says question Claire bear on Aaron's channel talking about Shelly Jackson said Dave knew she would blow question begins at first I've ever heard she wanted to leave any thoughts yes I saw that and um, and absolutely there was there's a few different instances and we'll get to talking to those so yeah, yeah. there's an interview there's going to be a Shelly mm -hmm. interview that's specifically about Shelly with Jackson um, and with many other people, there's, I think we've done me, Mike, Amy, and Leah's coming on Tuesday. And then we've got a whole bunch more. And um, we probably have at least, well, once a week for the next several months, we're going to have a Where's Shelly video. And these are people that worked with Shelly, that knew Shelly, um, and had interactions with Shelly. So we're yep. trying and to give you a... And if you as a viewer fall into that category and we have not already spoken, then please reach out to me because we are going to continue on this question until we have an answer. Yes. Um, CG Paul SLP says, how is Mike worried about him, Courtney? Yes, um, we put a link in the description to a post that Christy did on Mike Rinders, on his blog, his wife did. And um, it's in the description below. You can take a look at that. And that's the current update. That as of, I think that came out this morning, I want to say. Yes. Um, Felipe B says, Mark, has DM ever seen, seen your DM tattoo? Yeah, mm. he thought it was his initials when he saw it. And I had to correct him saying, I don't think so. That's Depeche Mode. Um, so yes, he has seen it. Um, I'm in Tampa. If I can do anything for the renders, we've missed our Headleys and are happy you're back, but glad you had family time. Thank you, Lori. Uh, we appreciate it. Um, I don't think we need any, I don't think, um, we're not doing any meal trains or whatever they're called. We're not doing anything like that just yet, but, um, we'll let you know if, trust me, if we need something, we're going to ask for it. We're not, we're not afraid. We, no. <laughs> we do things for people all the time, all the time. 
So when we need help, we ain't afraid to ask. If we need some help, we're going to say, hey, listen, we're, uh, you know, I got broad shoulders, but I can't carry all this. I need some people to come over here and help me out here. Yeah. Caroline and we've made Wilson. very clear that we are at Mike and Christie's full disposal to help with whatever they need, as has many other, as have many other people, but we will definitely keep you posted. Yeah. Dynamic duo Mark and Claire truly making a difference in this world. Great work helping clear one from the streets of L.A. But for, oh, let's say 30 to, yeah, well, we are definitely um, helping people get out. I think that's what that's in reference to. Um, and, yeah, we have been hearing from a lot more people inside Scientologists. We've been hearing from staff members that are at their organizations. We've been hearing from members who are trying to leave uh, successfully without losing their family. That's really the trick in Scientology. The trick is, the trick's not leaving Scientology. It's easy to leave Scientology. All you got to do is come on a podcast or come on a video and say, I was in Scientology. You're done. You're out. The trick is to get out and not lose your family or not lose your business or not lose your livelihood. So we're, we're trying to help people um, exit, but exit intact with their lives intact. And for those that um, ha are not able to do that, we're here to help them start their lives over if they need to with whatever resources. So that's the other thing is if you can't leave with your family, you can't leave with your business, but you, you for your own um, sanity's sake, you cannot stay and keep working for Scientology or you can't keep contributing to the abuse or whatever it is, um, that is exactly why the Aftermath Foundation is there to be able to have the resources for those people who couldn't exit with their family or couldn't keep their job or couldn't um, stay in the same town or whatever it is. Um, so we're trying to do everything we can. Miss Polo. 100% team, Mike. Anything we can do, please let us know. Holding Mike, his family, and friends in our hearts and sending them all love. Yes, thank you for that. Um, Wiggly Woo. Reference to Mike. I promise I'll be positive and supportive going forward, but for right now, I'm going to have myself a good little cry, setting strength and strong belief for the best. Yeah, it's okay. That's okay to cry. It's sad. It's not the happiest news we've got, but, uh, you know, if there's a way out, we'll get, we're going to get out. We're going to make it, make it to the other side. Uh, Nikki G says, thank you for everything. Glad you all took some time off and got recharged. I know your time in Scientology make you cherish family time praying for Mike. Yes, thank you for that, Nikki G. Um, yeah, I think um, I'm going to add another Claire to the stream and I'm going to get rid of this Claire because I had a frozen Claire in the stream and that Claire was no fun. So adding this other Claire that moves around, much better. Again, old Sorry Claire. About that. This is the old Claire. See, look at that. She's even giving me a dirty eye. So we got to get rid of her and just have this one. I was like, what the heck happened? From I'm now frozen. on, I'm just going to keep like, not what I want, what I want. Not good. Oh, my gosh. Good. Okay, good. Um, thank you for that. I was like, where'd Claire go? Oh, well. And then I saw you pop up in another window. I was like, oh, she's coming back in and another one here. Um, yep. Nikki G. Oh, da, da, da. oh, you already showed that one. Sorry. Um, I got mind wiped by the uh, by having multiple Claire's. Uh, Moon Lampy says, "Just a small contribution because you're all so super adorable. Thanks for all that you do. Keep up the good work. Your videos keep me sane now that my life is a roller coaster. Love from the Netherlands, XOXO Monique. Well, thank you, wow. Monique. I appreciate that, and I'm glad that we could be some sort of small beacon of light in whatever darkness you're involved with. With stay strong. You life. got this. We are here for the long haul." Ruthie R, Super Chat, or whatever they call that, Super Sticker. I always super call it a Super Chat. It's a Super Sticker. Whether he wants it or not, Novenas are going for Mike. Novenas. Novenas are going from Whether he wants it or not, Novenas are going for Mike already. I don't know what that means, Anne Hummingbird. We, but, we um, should know, but we grew up in a cult, so. Yeah, sorry about that. We'll uh, look it up afterwards. Thank you for the Super Chat. <laughs> Um, second, listen to your book. What happened to your childhood friends that went to the SO before you? Are they still in? And Claire, yes, Ashley and you did great in sticking with the interview. Perfect. Um, Stacy, I have talked, um, to some of my childhood friends, but the ones that joined this Sea Org before me, um, one is at the, still at the international headquarters. 
him and his wife tried to escape um, many years ago and they were caught and they were dragged back. So he wanted to get out. This is Jesse Radstrom, if you guys are wondering. Um, I talk a lot about him in my book. And um, he was my best friend when I was uh, uh, younger, um, probably like 12 to 15, I want to say. Um, and he did try to escape with his wife, um, Tiffany, and they were um, caught. They had a, they, he had a vehicle. He had it packed it up with all their stuff. And they said at the end base is a highway that divides the property. And they said they were just driving through one gate to go to the other side of the property. And then when they got onto the highway, they were just going to hightail it. And the guard booth were like, okay, just wait there. We're not going to open the gate. Just wait there. A guard's going to come down. A guard came down, opened up the back of their car, and all their stuff was there. And they were like, get out. You guys are done. That's it. So, um, yeah, he tried to escape and he got... Um, he got intercepted, which is really a bummer because I really, really would have loved for him to get out of there. He, um, Jesse was in Religious Technology Center with Claire. Um, yep. when Claire was in Religious Technology Center, so was he. And then he got kicked out and then he got put into the division that I worked in where we did the uh, video and film work. And then eventually, just by uh, people getting sent away or people escaping, he actually rose to the top and became... Um, I think he was the commanding officer Golden Era Productions at one point. And yeah, when he, he tried was. to when he tried to escape, he was actually the head of their media organization um when he tried to escape and he got intercepted. So it's a bummer. Uh Quentin Hubbard says, What's your favorite airplane? That is a very random question. Is that because Claire, you saw a video of Claire flying a plane, taking off uh, in a plane? Um, that was, that a, was Cirrus, a Cirrus SR-22 uh, SR Turbo um, <laughs> that Claire was flying um, that I was showing the video of her. Um, but that is a pretty cool plane. But I don't know if it's, I don't, I don't really have a favorite airplane. Do you have a favorite airplane? Nope. Uh, the other one I flew was a DA-40NG. And what what brand is that one? Uh, Diamond. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know about that. Claire updates. You would not believe <laughs> some of the stuff that Claire does as part of her job. She updates airplane avionics and does hangar stuff and tugs and small Cirrus planes and Diamond planes. And you, she's she does she has a whole other life besides this nonsense that we're doing here. Thank you, <laughs> Quentin. A, I appreciate I'm, you. I'm what they'd call a Jane of all trades. <laughs> yes. Um, Michelle McIntosh. Hey, did you guys see did you guys see Aaron post about Shelly Miscavige and the psychic? She said that Shelly was up in heaven with Kirstie Alley and L. Ron Hubbard, L O L. Yeah. Um I think that was um I think somebody that was sent us the link. I haven't had a chance yeah, to see it. I think that it was yet. more and of I a see... joke. I don't think anybody really believes that. If she was, um, we would have a, a some sort of report that that happened. Like yeah. that, there would be a, 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 a public document in most cases um, when that happens. And if she is, then both she and L. Ron Hubbard are AWOL uh, because they were supposed to come back and pick up a new body and resume their billion year contract. So that would be a no report. Yes, Janine Greider says, Claire, your interview with Ashley Banfield was great. Also, is Mike okay? Um, the link in the description for the mic info, and you can talk about the interview. Thank you. I appreciate you watching. Um, oh, perfect. Scott, if Shelly passed away, could see Scientology keep that hidden? Not likely, because unless they moved her somewhere, like she's in, we, we're, we suspect that she's up in Big Bear, or near Big Bear in a town called Crestline or uh, Lake Arrowhead or Rim of the World. It's di di different names depending on where, what, you know, exactly where you're talking about. But um, if people, there's been a lot of people that look for death certificates, look through the records to see, they search the records based on people that we think might be getting up there that they would pass away. And they would look in the county where the, these places are located and no one has found any in Riverside County, California, or San Bernardino County. I think those are both of those are in those counties. I don't or I don't know if Big Bear or Rim of the World or Crestline, whatever they're calling it. I don't I'm pretty sure that's also San Bernardino County. Um, but whatever county it's in, um, 
people have been checking and there hasn't been any public record. So unless they move her to some random county in another state, it's hard to it's hard to know. It's hard to know. Yeah. Alicia Medley says, "Will sign will currently will currently will Scientologists. Current Scientologists see the press release DM put out? What will they think knowing what DM says is 100% is lies?" Team Mike. Yeah, so that's what we were talking about earlier, guys. If they do put out like well they did. They already did it. They put out a statement which I'm going to say 99.9 percent of all Scientologists know that that's a 100 percent lie like they just know it's 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 in their policies don't report us to civil authorities police are civil authorities um oh and and by the way side comment undoubtedly David Miscavige wrote that release not Corinne Powell yeah that's what it has his language also yep. Corinne Powell hasn't written anything I'm gonna say in years that's been of any consequence she doesn't even speak English she yeah, she's English never is been her seen second publicly like, yep. yeah she, she and she is not highly regarded it within Osa or by David Miscavige at all he doesn't like her he talks and he talked smack about her all the time when we were there, when it was like, oh, this is needs to get handled. Oh, great. Corinne, what's she going to, you know, that's, that's, it's disdain. He actually has disdain for all. I think I want to say almost all of the OSA staff, he has um, communicated that all, their jobs are coming to him to do. And that's why when you see all these things that are written, he's writing it and he's complaining the entire time, telling them, you guys are making me write this because you can't write something that's sensible. Meanwhile, he's writing things that are completely nonsensible. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, it is a it's a world of crazy there, guys. I hate to break it to you. It is a world of cra crazy. Thanking uh, Ms. Pillow again. Thank you. Thanking all SPTV for coverage of DM trial. Justice for the victims is sweet, though SA, uh, assault effects can be lifelong nonetheless. Must believe victims first, not the power structures like Scientology, etc. Excuse me. Se special thanks to Claire from um, Assault Survivor. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. Again, guys, this is not about um, this. Is not about us. It's, it's never not. been about us. And it's we not. have repeatedly said this is about the victims of Scientology. We're doing all this so those people can escape and start over without having to wait. That that's the the the. You can always make more money. You can always get a car. You can buy a house. You can go on vacation. We can't get more time. Time is the only thing we can't get more of. You can't buy more time. Nope. And when you're in Scientology, it's just a time suck. You're throwing away time. That's all you're doing. It's not, I mean, the money, people that are, have given them millions of dollars, that's unfortunate. Um, but the fact that those guys are giving them decades as well, that's the real, that's the only thing I wish somebody would have told me. Like, you know, one year in instead of 15 years in, you can't get that time back. Nope. So we're trying to help these people. We're trying to uh, get them a little extra time to themselves. Yep. To and have sometimes, sometimes, actually often, fairly often, we find ourselves in positions of having to do some really hard things, but it's never an option not to. We will always stand up. We will always support people. We will always be here to help people leaving. Bottom line, end of story, no questions asked. Yes. Luna3120 says, I wouldn't expect you two to be in the same room. My husband and our computer gamers, and we have our own setups. Nice. Luna, I got to <laughs> tell you a great story. You were just reminded me. Here of. it comes. <laughs> so when we first got out, and we, when we were, it was, I want to say it was in like 2006, we were living in Burbank. And I used to, I love, I used to love playing video games and I had a, I'm a gamer and all that good stuff. And I used to love to play this game called Call of Duty and I would play it a bunch. And um, Claire was uh, pregnant with our first child and, um, and we wanted to, or we had just had our, by this time, I think we actually, by the time we lived in Burbank, we actually had um, our first son was born. And I'd be playing games and Claire would be around the house. And I would, um, you know, I had projects I was working on. But um, 
she wanted to play Call of Duty too. So I set up her computer on the other side of, we had an office that we both shared. I said, okay, you set up over there and I'll set up over here. And then I was, and then I thought, you know what? I got a good idea. Cause you're just learning how to play. I'm going to teach you how to play. But at first you should just be my spy. So I'm going to be on the <laughs> allied forces team. You're going to be, you're going to be on the other here. team. I'm going to be no on the other idea. team. It's like, okay, sure, whatever. I don't know you, how to do this. <laughs> you just tell me where those guys are hiding so I can, sh I can shoot them. <laughs> but you're going to be on the team of the guys I'm shooting. Anyway, we did this for a while. It was tons of fun. And Claire got to learn how to play and all this other stuff. One day, we go to, get, we go to log on. There's a note that says, you've been banned from the Call of Duty service. <laughs> they found out that we were both on the same IP address and we were on different teams. I was like, yeah, you can't do that. That's... Some in some circles that's considered cheating. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, we um we like having our separate setups here. Thank you for that, Luna. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna try to rip through as many of these as possible because we don't Perfect. have a lot of time and, left. Well, let's do let's do a giveaway now and then a giveaway in ten minutes. I'll, I'll give you a ten minute extension since mm. it's four thirty. Oh, it's already four thirty. Okay, yeah. Sorry, so get people. up in the chat, guys, if you want. Um. Uh, yes, I also used to play Doom, and that is where the ultimate BFG is in Doom. Um, I just saw that in one of the comments. Um, yeah. If you want um, some merch, you or gotta get in the comments. Or if you want a book, a blown for good book, you could say book me, you could say merch me, um, whatever you want. Um, you could say anything you want, but book me and merch me are the ones I'm gonna respond to because. Uh, we're trying to keep this civil, you know. Um, uh, you can say of, bobble. And speaking of merch, we have a new Theta Potato line coming shortly. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Theta Potatoes. Um, okay. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Cheryl right. Tex Tex. Texacana. 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 Cheryl, Texacana. Me, me, me. Okay. Well, you got me, me, me. Um, if you want to send an email to Claire at Blown for Good and um, go to the Blown for Good store, the link is in the description or the Blown, Blown for Good shop, whatever, the, whatever it's called. Um, go in there and pick out something you like and then email a link to that to Claire at BlownForGood.com and she will send you a link so that you can get it. Look at Cheryl. She, me, me, me. Um, Cheryl's still going. I'm seeing like 17 <laughs> more Cheryls. Cheryl, oh. you won. It's done. You won. Oh my gosh. Cheryl, please, Cheryl. There's, <laughs> Cheryl might be one of these people that Colby was uh, getting excited about. Um, she she finally saw it. She says, oh my gosh, I saw it. Oh, she did? Okay, yeah. here we go. Oh, there we go. There you go. There she got you it. Go. Tell you, I don't know if that's what paid off or not, Cheryl, but I did <laughs> see many, many, many Cheryls. Um, thank you for that. Okay, I'm gonna try to get back to these questions. Thank you okay. for that, Cheryl. Thank you for participating. Um, Michelle Carpenter, Mark, question. Do you think that finding yourself in the position you were in towards the end and finding you were good, capable, and enjoyed it help your decision to blow for good? Um, no, I'll tell you really, Michelle, at the end, I had put up with so much nonsense in 15 years. And I, I mean, I'm not trying to be egotistical or I'm not trying to be rude or I'm not trying to pump myself up. But of the people that were there, I was pretty much a rock star. I was getting a lot of stuff done. And no matter where, what area I got put into, that area ended up doing good after I was in charge of it or after I was doing stuff in there. Sure, I did things Dave Miscavige didn't like every once in a while and pissed him off. But for the most part, I was a I was a producer. I was a I was a mover and a shaker, so to speak. So the fact that I gave them 15 years of moving and shaking and they were still willing to throw me under the bus for some stupid thing that I didn't even do, that was the kind of thing that tipped me to like, you know what? These guys do not appreciate me. They don't care about me. They don't care about my relationship because they're always trying to keep Claire and I apart and they're trying to convince her of divorcing me every second week. Um, so I was, you know, I was like, you know what? Anything would be better than this. I'm out. 
And I 100% knew Claire would not come with me. She would have 100% ratted me out. So the fact that I escaped and then she contacted me, it was a better scenario to get her out than if I would have tried to convince her to come with me. Because that takes a lot to, to escape. You have to be willing to ca get caught and, and still try to escape. But if you do get caught, it is, they make it almost nearly impossible for you to escape a second time. Um, it, it takes years and years for you to gain their trust back to where you'll have another chance to escape. So when you sure. do it, you got to do it. Is that safe? Is that uh, accurate there, babe? That's fair. Yeah. Um, Gottenberg is in the same building door to door as Sweden's oldest and largest gay bar. Oh my one, goodness, one. that's amazing. <laughs> yes, that's one, awesome. 1.1 1. 1. 1. 1 covert hostility. Yes, on that's the awesome. Tone scale <laughs> that's the Harper. best. <laughs> that's Thank awesome. you for that, Arnie. Yes. Um, or Arna. Um, Greg Watkins. So, how long before Scientology claims that Mike's illness is because of being an SP? Um, oh, I don't know that they would ever. Hmm, that's a good question. I don't know that they'd ever. You know, I wouldn't put it past them to stoop so low as to be to you know serve up some nonsense like that but um in the sea we'll org be here if they do such a stupid thing yeah in the sea org it is very popular because l ron hubbard smoked and david miscavige smokes it's very popular to smoke inside the sea organization i think mike was in the sea org was he in like 40 something years or whatever yeah. it was it was a lot of a years long time. and a lot of those years was smoking so there are a lot of there. I, I, I keep saying somebody should do a study. I don't know how you could, but there's a lot of Sea Org members and even Scientologists as well. Um, when they get up to the highest levels of Scientology, cancer gets them. It's a weird thing. I don't know if it's the smoking. I don't know if it's all the niacin and all the vitamins and all the horrible supplements you take, the overdose of calcium and magnesium that they're doing on a regular basis. I'm not sure what it is, but it seems like of the people that I know in the real world and the people that I know in Scientology, a very huge percentage of the people that I hear about that pass away in, Scien in the Scientology world that I knew, it's almost, it's I would say 90% of them is from cancer, some sort of cancer. Yeah, and somebody asked if Scientology will let Mike's kids know, and the answer is affirmatively no. They will not no. let his children know. Yeah. Elizabeth, thank you for the super sticker. I appreciate that. Um, I'm trying to get to as many of these as I can. Oh, my goodness. C.S.E. C.S.E. Isaac. <laughs> Just wanted to say thank you for all you do. Hashtag Mike Strong. Thank you very much for that, Cassie. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, um, now in the coffee, cults, and crafts group, people call her Casey all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Kendallings. Um, Claire, are you ever able to slip into a British accent? No. Um, and do you think your mom would leave if she could? Uh, I can't. No, I can't. There are certain words that I can't say right, such as tour and six <laughs> six uh but i cannot do it and i always only ever wanted an american accent which is why i worked so hard to get one um and my mom would leave if she divorced my stepfather um or if he passed away and other than that no she wouldn't and even then yeah she well anyway it's fine the last time i saw her I told her i love you mom she hugged me and said she hoped to see me again soon. So that just illustrates 100% that disconnection is about control, leverage, and destroying families, period. Yes. Okay, Nancy Ives. Claire, loving the lives with you and Amy. Yay, thank you. I will not be on the live on Wednesday because, as I've mentioned, we'll be traveling to L.A. Didn't quite have the foresight to look ahead to my Wednesdays, but that's all right. I'm getting better. <laughs> Jackie, super sticker. Thank you for that, Jackie. Appreciate that. Um, no more cults. I'm glad Christy did an update for Mike. Happy to hear the doctors have a path to help him. Mike, Christy, and family know you have major SPTV support. Absolutely. 
Yes, completely. Um, Reese, Reese, Reese. Um, love you guys's love you guys and your merch. Well, thank you. We have been getting a lot of um, uh, favorable comments on the merch, and people are sending us. If you got merch and you like it, send us a picture of you with the merch. Um, and uh, yeah, we want to see what everybody's wearing out there. Um, so confusing, Ken's Ken's channel says. E meter to catch lying and training how to lie. Mind blown. Scientology. Only truth is lies. So nice you have a base from dead. Yes, Ken. Um, thank you for that. Yeah, you know, that's the other thing. And this is a crazy thing in Scientology. So when you're in Scientology and something bad happens to you, it's because you have done something wrong. That's it. You've done something wrong and that's it. There's no question. It's you did something or you're withholding something or if anything bad happens to you, you did something wrong. When things that uh, when Scientology has wrong things happen to them, it's never them. They've never done anything. It's the craziest thing that they always say the person who's getting in trouble or the person's this is happening to. It's always something they did and they've got they have evil thoughts or they have evil deeds. But when Scientology gets in trouble, it's everybody else. We never did anything. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's a big misunderstanding. Yes. Ms. Pelo, 100% xenophobic. Yes, <laughs> get, I get there it. Xenophobic. Yeah, no. Xenu's a good guy. Let's not forget. Xenu, Lord Xenu, our savior. Hail Xenu. Um, he is the, um, he's uh, Scientology's Lex Luthor, essentially, <laughs> or uh, Thanos. He's Scientology's Thanos. Okay, that's it. That's a better, he's Lord. He's a galactic intergalactic overlord lord zenu okay this guy's not a this guy's not small fry this guy transported billions of people um a place that took nine weeks to get here at light speed okay that's not a small task there's a lot of logistics involved with that um and a lot of technology that we don't have access to so if zenu is real which scientologists think he is real the one who's who, the ones who've done OT level three and above, they know about Xenu and his superpowers and all this other stuff he has access to. And if you believe that, and you think a four foot thirteen guy named Dave is gonna over outdo this intergalactic overlord, that's where I think you're is you have misplaced ideas. I don't think that's how it's gonna go. So yes, all right. Hail five Zenu. minute warning, honey. Five minute warning. I'll do this as long as I want. Um, <laughs> hey, at Mark Depeche was on the Smart List pod. I'm yes, I saw out. that. I saw that, Angel. Thank you. Um, pick me. My first real estate deal was today. I did pick you. Um, that yep. was from earlier when I pulled it up. Um, I yep. want a mug that says, oh my goodness, they're similar. We can do that. Okie put dokie. It, put it on the list. Can. If I see yep. you writing, I know it might happen. Uh, Michelle R., what would have to happen to make Scientology release everyone from their SP status and allow families to reunite? Oh, there would have to be a cataclysmic event where David Miscavige is no longer in charge of Scientology. <laughs> There's no way David Miscavige... David, I have... Uh, if I get to it, we've we've been doing so much and we have these this special project that we've been working on. But... Um, in one of the spy files, there's 5,000 spy files, by the way, guys. I have 30 that are on me. There's 5,000 total. But in one of those that I was looking through the other day, they actually list out the staff that they're getting rid of and they're going to throw away like trash. And they're talking trash about them in the documents where they're saying, we're going to throw this person out. They don't care about their members at all. Not at all. It's all about the money. Um, they don't care if they get to see their families again. That's like... That's not a priority. Um, Mish seeks or me, me is sheiks. Mish, me me ish ish seeks. seeks. Noob to the Mish. channel. I hope that I can ask a Scientology question, please. Do the big time celebs go through auditing and the bridge? And how come LRH had to do a secret takeover of Geo? He's LRH. Could you not just say you're all gone? It's a lot of questions there. Uh, Mish. Yes. Eeks. Well, thanks for joining us, me ish seeks. <laughs> um, yes, you can ask a Scientology question. Yes, the celebs go through auditing and the bridge. They're required to do that. Um, <clears throat> takeover of the geo. That's because 12 
people were put in prison, so they had to disband the Guardian's office and yeah. get rid of it and put a new replacement structure that did does all the same things, just has a new name, which is Office of Special Affairs. Yeah, they didn't. Yeah, exactly. That's that's a good answer. Thank um, you. Hopefully we answered your question satisfactory. Destiny Salazar. Yes. I'm not big into classic prayers, but change my profile pick and solidarity for Mike. Much love to him and his family. Thank you for that, Destiny. And she has a little bobblehead. Mike Rinder awesome. bobblehead. That's Thank very you, amazing. Um, come visit Shetland Island, Scotland. Okay, Angel. Okay. Awesome. We'll put it on the list. Put it on yes. the list. Claire, write it down. Um, uh, yes, I did. <laughs> Apollonia Paradise. Holy crap, you guys have a lot of great new merch. We do. We have a really do. Most of it is suggestions from you guys. And also, if you have a suggestion and you want us to do something, but you're a creative and you can work your way around Photoshop or InDesign or whatever you use to crank out um, artwork, um, send it to us. If it's great and we like it, Claire will email you back and we yes. will uh, we'll make it into something. And let me interject. Clara is in the chat. Hey, Clara, we love you. Somebody just made an amazing suggestion, is which is that we do a Team Mike mug. And I will actually put that on Mike's merch channel um, on his platform because I have access to do that. So, Clara, if you could bump that to the top of your priority list, I would be that would be amazing. Yeah, we'll put that up on Mike's channel. And then if you guys want to support Mike and his family, you can just go over there and get a Team Mike mug. And, and um, you can donate there and you can donate on Mike Rinder's blog. They haven't asked for that, um, but It's not going to hurt. I'll tell you that. Yes. I don't exactly. think they're going to get mad at us for sending people over there to buy a mug. I think no, we'll be okay. Or to donate. Or yep, to donate. Absolutely. On the way we have our merch store set up, you can just buy merch or you can just make a straight donation or you can buy merch and then, you know, say, put the rest towards a donation, whichever way you guys want to do it. But um, yeah, we should do that for Mike's channel. Let's get uh, let's get yes. that going. Yeah, Clara, wow. Clara Miss... already answered. She's on it. She's amazing. Yes, perfect. Miss Polo again. Your videos are so helpful to understanding Scientology and cult slash power structure abuses. Your sunny dispositions and humor make it very digestible. Cracker licking or not. By the way, I'm zen -uphobic. I don't know <laughs> what this means. Um, I'm not. I'm, I'm in, I was growing, grew up in Thank a Thank you, Miss Pillow. We appreciate um, it. <laughs> yes. Oh, right here. Ripley fought the xenomorph in Aliens. Ah. Oh. Wow. Okay. So I get it. Yeah, that's not a good thing. Those are bad guys. We don't like those guys. Those guys, Lord Zenu, those guys, not the same. Not the same. Lord Zenu was just a, he was, just, he's just an overlord. He doesn't have um, acid for blood. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> Thank you, Ken's channel. Um, Best wishes, Mike Render. Stay positive and lots of love coming your way. Thank you, Kay. Appreciate that. Panko, thanks for letting us know about Mike. Fans may want to check out his blog link and maybe donate. Yeah, we just yes. said Panko. Just go, we'll put you, a Panko. link in the description for Mike. We'll make a note. Put a, a link in the description to Mike's store. Yep. And then as soon as we have the Team Mike um, mug up in his store, um, we might make those a little teeny bit more expensive so that they can raise some funds because we're selling a lot of the stuff we're not selling it we're keeping the prices pretty low we're not trying to make a bunch of money off the merch um so we might make that mug a little higher price than the regular mugs but um thanks for that panko misbehaving for goldie's coffee fund up oh, you gotta make oh, a note nice. it's gotta go to okay. goldie got it goldie needs I her coffee do that right after this yep Okay, and Rocky Road, Xenomorph is an alien parasite, so body thing. Yes, I get it, Rocky Road. Thank you. Um, yeah, um, <laughs> Xenomorph, that's so funny. Bella Lotta, everyone wishes that they had a Goldie to keep the BS away. I deal with it every day, and I wish I had a Goldie. I know. I don't Goldie. even know about the BS because of Goldie. There could be BS, and I just, I'm just not aware of it. I also, I'm kind of, um, I'm kind of like whatever when people get it. You know, people want to, you know, like all the Scientology trolls on Twitter. I see it and I go, oh, this is not good for you guys. Like when they posted that statement, I was like, oh, this is going to this is going to backfire horribly. I mark my words. Lisa Dunnigan slash little. Hi, Mark and Claire. Enjoy these chats so much. And we love our beautiful SP bracelets. 
Thank Yay. you, Lisa. Yeah, I'm, I got a little uh, taken aback because I know another Lisa Dunnigan, and she's married to a security guard oh. at the base named Danny Dunnigan. So I did a little double take. I'm sorry for that. You must be a separate person. We're all good. Peace. And it's also Lisa Dunnigan Little, not I understand. Dunnigan I understand. I'm just saying. It's okay. I, it it's took, okay. took me a second to go like, <laughs> wait a minute here. Um, blow me in Chicago. Okay. Well, there you go. That's an idea. I was invited to the Chicago Ord Barbecue. They actually asked guests to bring a side dish to the event. I didn't go. Thanks for all you wow. do. Yeah, That's we're having hilarious. a barbecue. Bring some food. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Got three billion dollars, but not enough for potato salad. That's a yep. whole new level. Thank you for Bobblehead. Donate it to the aftermath. Stay dry and hope your sump pump is working so Mark stays dry in the basement. I'm in Highlands Ranch. Thank nice. you, Holly. Yes. And we have a new sump pump and it's working, I hope. But yes, it's yes. been raining a lot here, guys, in Colorado. South Dakota isn't really another country, but it's a flyover state, so it may as well be. I'm here for all of SPTV. Thank you, Rural SD Lawyer. We appreciate it. Yes. Um, Kaz Fern says, everyone posting where Shelly made me think of Depeche Mode's Everything Counts. Yes, thank you very much for that, Kaz. I appreciate it. Hubby wears the pants, but I tell him which ones to wear. That sounds very familiar to me, actually. Um, <laughs> PSP Wolf. Got and read my autograph, my autographed Bone for Good book, BFG copy mug, SPTV coffee mug, and now using my SPTV mouse pad. I love them all. Also prayers to Mike Rinder and his family for a swift and complete recovery. PSP Wolf, you are mad crazy with that merch. I got to say. Amazing. Um, yes. That's awesome. Thank you for that. <laughs> they got everything. They have the whole BFG desk setup. Um, <laughs> L-M-S-E-K. Oh, L-M. Uh, oh boy! This is the this is oh, the German yes. quote from Adolf Flink, Hitler. So Flink yes. wie die Winhood za wie Leder, hot we Krupstahl, is swift as greyhounds, tough as leather, hard as Krupp steel. This is the quote from um, Adolf our, Hitler. Uh, the yeah from Adolf. Wow, that's so crazy that they have the saying for RTC. They're they're. That's so weird. That is it's so insane. Crazy. Every I don't time think I think anyone about it, I get goosebumps all over my body. I'm like, no wonder I was fighting this so so long. I'm <sighs> like, how can I? How can you be hard as cold chrome steel? It doesn't even make sense. And now I completely understand why it was so 100% repulsive to me. That is crazy. Sparky in Oregon, thank you for that super sticker. Um, Lily, Mark, I suggested a Kelly to play. I can't. I just can't get enough by DM. I think even better, you could be singing at the end of your Cracker Liquor ad. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, unfortunately, I know all too well that Depeche Mode uh, has a YouTube channel and they would likely strike that. Um, oh, Sparky and Organ again. Oh, no, Mr. Bill. Yes, I do uh, have a Mr. Bill behind me somewhere. I don't know if he's back there. But dogs might have stolen it. Was it... Um Novena are this are a series of prayers, especially in the Catholic Church. Thank you, Barbara. I appreciate yes, it. Thank you. Um, uh, that was in regards to that earlier comment that I did not understand. Um, Lulu 92, I'm fundraised walk for the American Lung Association for years in memory of my late grandpa who smoked his entire life. This year I'm walking out of mic too. Thank you, Lulu. Amazing. Thank you. Um, Shannon Graves, I just wanted to say it's great to see your faces. Thank oh, you, Shannon. It's Shannon. great to see you here. Good to see um, you too. This Shannon's on a full time party. I, I think she's at a, she's either at a, a concert or she's at an amusement park. But there is never a, it's a yeah, lot of fun. For a dull going moment. On there. Happy birthday to the other graves, uh, Shannon. Thank you for that. Um, uh, Theo Theo Steichen Theo Steichen. Um, did Claire live in a house that has since been demoed? Did a bunch of folks live in the house? Once I thought you talked about sharing a room. Yes. Um, Theo, thank you for that. We lived um, right next to the International Scientology base in a town. It's called Gilman Hot Springs. The entire town is sci the Scientology property. But we lived along this road called Sublet Road. And there were all these houses directly adjacent to the property. And it was on a golf course. And that's where all of the most of the RTC and the top executives in um, in the other organizations at the ant base, they lived in these houses so they could stay as late as possible and still get there without having to wait for travel or have transport. And also, so they'd be close. So it's harder to escape. And, All um, right. honey, and, I got to jump. Okay. I got to jump and, out.
But, okay. but I'm just going to say, Clara did the tea mic design. I'm going to go over there right now and add it to Mike's uh, merch store. Bye, everybody. Sorry. Awesome, I'm guys. I'm going to stay here and answer the last. It's just the last few questions, guys. Anyway, all of those houses that were along the golf course, they were all demolished. Every single one of them. Uh, so they're no longer there. It's just dirt next to a golf course. Um, Lulu, I did that one. Thank you. Shannon, thank you. Miranda, um, did you guys get new wedding rings when you left? We actually did. We did. We went. I took uh, Claire uh, somewhere in Burbank, some jewelry store, and said, "What? P pick whatever you want. We get rid of the the ones we had were like $100 or 200 bucks, and for the both. <laughs> Uh, we weren't. We didn't have a lot of money. I think actually, my father even paid for the rings that we did have, um, and um, and he wasn't. He didn't have a lot of uh, money either. But he still he gave us a few hundred bucks to buy some rings. Um, we got new ones. Roberta uh, Roberta Alton. I joined late. Did something happen to Mike? I hope he's okay and sending him prayers. Yes, it's the links in the description, Roberta. Um, and his wife did an update on their blog. Addison and Steele. Thank you both for everything you do and the whole SPTV crew. Addison and Steele is from the Spectator series published in 1711. My BF says it sounds like P-Star. Ugh, not that for sure. Uh, my boyfriend sounds, sounds like P-Star. Ugh. I don't know what PS tar, PS tar, P star. I don't know. Anyway, Addison and Steele. Sounds cool. Thank you, Addison and Steele. I appreciate it. Jennifer Kane Najour. Good vibes and prayers for Mike. Sad to hear the news today. Yes, thank you for that, Jennifer. Um, I went to the Rockies game and walking back to the parking lot, I walked by Scientology building, all lights on and one guy inside figured a security guard. Yeah. Or the receptionist. Usually they do have one person in that's just a receptionist, but there is absolutely nothing happening there except for they used to give out free parking. Um, or no, they used to charge for parking, but they're right across from the ballpark. So it was a good place if you wanted to park there. But I think they charged 20 bucks last time I went to there. And there's some other lots around there a little cheaper. Um, but they do give you a little goodie bag with a bunch of Scientology goodies in it, like uh, books and stuff like that. Um, okay, I'm just getting caught up here. Claire, when will you talk about your trial experience? Um, Claire did a bunch of videos. Um, she recorded a bunch of videos. I think she called them like the diary of an expert witness or something. I, I, I'm pretty sure she'll do something. We're going to, we got a trip when we get back from the trip, we'll do it. Team Mike Mug, please, please, please. Yes, Claire's off working on it right now, Elizabeth. Thank you for that. Claire, do you know the Gilbert O'Sullivan song? Claire, I can't help singing when you're on SPTV. Claire, I can't help singing. And I don't know about that. I'm going to save that one in case um, um, she does know about it. Thank you for that, Pam. I love the idea of Team Mike Mug. I bought a mug from his store that says blah, blah, blah on one side and SPTV on the other. Maybe have one of those mics be on the other side of Team Mike Mug. Yes, absolutely, Jennifer. Um, we'll get that done right now. Um, and why don't they do a wellness check on Shelly? Um, I think when Leah called the police, they actually did do a wellness check. And they made contact with her when she was with her handlers. But, um, yeah. Um, cat. Cat, I did it. Cat, I did it. Gave up on winning a bobblehead and bought one. We'll buy Mike Mug 2 ASAP. Please share his store. I couldn't find. Yes, absolutely. We'll do that. Thank you, Cat. I did it. Um, I think that's it, guys. Um, here's one. Um, question, do either of you know Joe R. DM's stepfather? Oh, yeah, Joe Reish. Um, he did a very interesting with Tony O recently. Yeah, there's actually a bunch of um, stories about Joe on Tony's blog. Um, over the several years ago, he was pretty active um, talking out and doing his story. Um, but um, yeah, he got declared a suppressive person a long time ago. And he hasn't had any contact with his own kids or the other Masterson kids. Um, whistleblower Goodwitch says, what in Xenu's name is a Theta Potato, please? <laughs> oh, I don't remember. Somebody's going to have to tell me what episode we talked about that. I think it was on a live. There was a, um, there was a parking maid that was giving Scientologist tickets. And there was a Scientologist who had put quarters in the meters. And he postulated with his Scientology superpowers 
he postulated a theta potato in the tailpipe of the um, meter maid and the meter maid's car broke down outside of the organization and the tow truck had to come. And it's a whole story that went around in Los Angeles about how this guy um, made this meter maid's car break down using his OT special powers. And that's where the theta potato comes from. Thanks for doing, Valerie. Thanks for Valerie. Valerie's in here a lot. I've seen her many, many times over the past few months. Thanks for doing a live stream on my birthday. Adds to my day. Well, thank you for being here, Valerie. You didn't have to do that on your birthday. Go have fun and go uh, have a great birthday. Um, Russ T. Aftermath Foundation question. Do you get many people who need help leaving because they're in the wrong country and can't afford to travel? Yeah, we just recently helped out somebody that was in another country and they need to get back to the United States. And, um, and we helped them. And we've helped people go to other countries from the United States. We've helped, I mean, I bought one, one early before the foundation days, I paid, I paid for a kid to go to London to go find his mom and his mom was here in the States. Oh my goodness. Um, okay. That's the Gilbert O'Sullivan one. I'm sorry. I can't ask her about that right now. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, thanks for all you guys that watched to the very end and, um, it's right at two hours. We just ticked to two hours, just like I said we would do, cause I know how long it takes to do this. Um, if you guys, um, if you guys can remember, um, check in the description for the mic link to the mic store. If it's not there now, as soon as I end this stream, I'm going to add it to the mic store. Um, and if you can go over there and pick up a team, Mike Mug, that would be amazing. And um, otherwise, uh, we will see you guys on the next one. And um, yeah, thanks for tuning in.